All right, let's try again and uh, find out if we can connect now with Leanne at the Senton Convention Center. Lee, hopefully everything is up and running now. <laughs> I hope so too, Pelesa. I hope so too. I hope I sound better. And I thought I gave you such a great introduction. I'm going to have to do it all over again. But I won't really. I mean, I just think I, 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 I think what's been so fantastic is to see this place buzzing and the amount of people that have come down here. All I'm going to repeat is that this is open until five o'clock. So if you're able to come down to the Santon Convention Center, free access to anybody that wants to come down here and uh, see some of the products, stands, uh, some of the stalls that are up here, you can come down and have a look. Now, let's, uh, let's uh, chat to my guests that are joining us here on the program. And uh, two wonderful guests that I've got. Of course, uh, I, somebody I don't really need to introduce is our, our Minister from the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Rob Davies. So good to see you. Welcome again. Thank you, Thank you very much. I felt, I felt like it was, we, we were here last year the same time, well, cutting ribbons to open years. up. I always come to I know, it is a Southern wonderful one. Uh, Excellent to see you. And then we have our culinary wonderful chef who not only is beautiful in her looks but in her cooking as well um, it's uh, Nom Pumalelo Mkwebu who is doing so well both locally and internationally so nice to have you on the show Good morning Leanne and thank you for having me it's an absolute pleasure all right first minister let me begin with you because something like this I know is your pride and joy because when we talk about the Department of Trade and Industry it is about um, inspiring young entrepreneurial businesses to come up, become sustainable, and be profitable and make jobs for people. Because that's what we're trying to do here in South Africa, aren't we? Make jobs. Well, indeed. And uh, make jobs in uh, higher value-added activities. So we're not just producers and exporters of products. So uh, what we uh, have as one of our major policy tools in our efforts to industrialize our country is localization. And that means that we want to encourage decisions both by consumers and by procurers, both in the public and the private sector, to buy products that are made in our own country. And that creates an opportunity for firms in our own country and for, uh, for firms in our own country to flourish and also for firms in our own country to grow jobs. So that's uh, what uh, Proudly South Africa is about. Uh, we have taken a number of steps as government to uh, ensure that there are rules in place and we have already designated about 23 pro product categories which we say have to be produced from local sources uh, and uh, that has uh, achieved quite some considerably important positive results, for example bus bodies, some of the locomotive manufacturing, uh, some of the pharmaceutical manufacturing, but we've also had some slippage I have to acknowledge and some of the uh, problems of, uh, of corruption in some of our public entities has meant that we haven't achieved what we should have achieved. So I think we're in a much better moment now to put some of that right and uh, we are introducing much more serious consequence management uh, for uh, entities that don't follow our procurement rules around localization. And then on top of that, in the private sector, we want to encourage the private sector to match that. And uh, so proudly South Africa becomes a way in which uh, a company can put up its hand and say, I am South African. And the people who are then going to procure from South African sources or the consumers who are going to buy from South, uh, South African manufactured sources can uh, find some way of recognizing yeah. uh, what is the local, uh, the local brand. And that yeah. creates opportunities for new entrants, for creativity, for entrepreneurship and all of that. And that's what uh, the development of our economy is all about. I mean, there isn't a, there, I mean, there's no obligation for every company or any company to join the Proudly, Proudly South African movement. However, having said that um, I just think it's a value add it's a massive value add to any company that joins this movement because as I've, I've realized that this is more of a movement and a, 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 a almost like a you know putting up your hand and saying I am proudly South African my product is proudly South African my roots are firmly firmly entrenched into this country and this is my support that I have um, for companies that I'm a bit skeptical of joining it. You know, what, what do you tell them? Well, I, I think that, um, as you uh, must know, and as our listeners will know, uh, President uh, Sir Ramaphosa is re-dynamizing all our efforts to uh, engage uh, with stakeholders uh, on uh, getting this economy going. And uh, in the past, uh, we had reached an understanding with the uh, business labor community uh, on an accord on localization. 
uh, and uh, the private sector committed itself because we aren't actually allowed under international trade group rules to force the private sector, but the private sector committed itself that it would progressively move towards the aspirational target of 75% procurement, actually. That's what they can commit themselves to. And uh, so I think that what we need to do is re-energize that. Proudly South Africa comes in because, uh, well, um, the private sector procurers uh, need to find some way of recognizing uh, what is a local product. Uh, that could be a deeply uh, uh, you know, difficult technical exercise, or it could simply be that you recognize that someone's got proudly South African membership. And that means that they are a, a South African company uh, and a South African a domicile company because it's also open to companies that prefer to come in South Africa, invest and set up productive facilities in our country uh, and then work the development of our economy. It's open to them as well. So I think that this is where the primary South African membership comes in. And we want to see a, a much broader and wider a promotion of the South, proudly South Africa logo uh, across, so that consumers also, uh, we can find a way of, uh, of making the choice when we go into the shops uh, of what we want to buy. And uh, I think that this is uh, what it's all about. Uh, we are hoping that we are going to be able to make a big push on localization this year. So uh, I think this is uh, where this all comes together. Excellent. All right, now I want to talk about one of my favorite topics in the world, and that's food. Love the stuff. Not as much as you, though, because <laughs> you, you are making waves around the world with your cooking, with your now first self-published book. You've won awards. You are on your way to, where are you going? You're going to China in May for this competition that you've won. You are making us so proud. Congratulations for your success. Very yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, you, you epitomize part of South Africa because as much as, as much as you've gained great success around the world, and I'm just reading very quickly in your introduction from being in America and gaining such wonderful accolades in America to the UK to many other countries, it's still those African roots and your upbringing in KZN, the village of KZN, that you still bring through. So this proudly South African brand, I mean, that's what you're all about, isn't it? Yes, Leanne, um, because wherever you go in the world, people want to know about your country and your identity. Um, they're not interested how much you know about them, more how much you can share what they do not know. And for me, the book is, was just perfect for that because everything from production to printing was all done in South Africa. So it's definitely a 100% proudly South African cookbook. And for us to have then managed uh, locally through the International Command Awards to win both the best self-published and first book and now the book uh, on the 26th of May I'm going to Yantai, China where the book will be honored globally as the one of the three best self-published books. That is absolutely incredible How, and there is that proudly South African logo yes. sitting proudly at the back. Um, yes. You know, an expo like this, having that logo on your book, what, what does it do for you? I mean, how does it make you feel? Especially that this is self-published. I mean, it's, this is a big deal. Yeah. Well, it, it was a labor of love. It was tough. It wasn't easy. And uh, um, I may also mention that the production team were all women, South African women. Um, and for me to carry this, I was just mentioning to Minister now that I've already watched the video when you go to the award ceremony in China that all the winners carry their country flag as they run across the stage. Oh, it's, like a, it's kind of like the Culinary Olympics. Yes, yes, oh, wow. definitely where, uh, you know, you raise your country flag and you're proud. And for me to know that the ingredients are South African, the recipes, the food history, it's all South African. Whatever I've learned in my influences of food travel, I've brought it back to South Africa. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this and my, my first impression, I mean, I'm just going to Ugh, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I've got a microphone in my hand, a book, and I'm going to try and show uh, the viewers a photograph. Now, when I look at that, it looks like this is a, a wonton, right? Yes. I mean, this is Chinese? Yes. What's so African was, about this now? When I went to downtown uh, New York and went to uh, the Chinese restaurants and I was tasting the wontons, and I suddenly thought, thought of umshuzi. And I was like, oh, this is like how when we boil meat, you know, the taste reminded me of that. So I thought, no, I'm going to write a recipe where I'm going to use these wontons, but I'm going to fill them with umshuzi, which is basically 
our food and then take it to the world. So now when I share with my Chinese friends, they can taste Chinese wontons done with our filling. That is, you see, this is what I love. I mean, I, in fact, I, it reminds me of a movie that I watched the other day, and it was about a, um, it was about a Mexican chef. It was a woman. I don't know if you've ever seen it, and she loved making sushi, but she was Mexican, and what she did was she instilled her influence in sushi. And what I'm gathering is that's what you're doing. You're taking recipes from all around the world, a banana pancakes from London. Yes. That, okay, this is the first time I'm looking at your book. So, banana pancakes from London. I mean, this must be. So I'm from KZN. So when bananas. I tasted, I was like, "Oh bananas. yes, I, I would love to throw bananas in this." And there's a history behind it. And when I started looking at the bananas, finding out that King Shaga had his own specific banana that he liked, so there was a story for us to tell about banana in KwaZulu Natal. So for me, it's all about that. How do we bring ourselves to the world stage of culinary? Experiences. This is beautiful. Uh, is it jingi pumpkin pudding? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm loving this. Yes. I that's think... memories of my grandmother. Oh, really? Coming in into the culinary world and then taking it to another level. Something beans and bone marrow. This is phenomenal. Um, you're off in May, and I believe it's on your birthday. Yes, on my birthday. That's the day that they will be hosting the awards so I'm looking forward to that. How do we get this book because I'm not sure if you're in, in major stores as yet? Yes, um, exclusive books yes around the country uh, so if you walk into an exclusive book and they don't have it they can bring it in from the next door. Bargain Books has the books um, and the book is available online at publisher.co.za which is also a South African online store fantastic and i see there's a website at the all right all right we have to cut out of that particular interview due to time constraints but thank you